What's up, guys? It's Mark Gattori here, and you're now listening to the Growing Up Italian Podcast. Make sure to hop on over to medicadomani.com for exclusive giveaways, newsletters, and news for all things Italian American. What's up, everybody? This is the Growing Up Italian Podcast. Today we have special guest Marvin Vittori, the Italian Dream. How's it going? Let's go, man. Absolutely, Com- like completely Italian. Grew up Italian, like of course. Like I'm not like this, like like the the typical Italian because I'm from up north, but. But like you know, like normally, like more most of the immigrants are from south. You know, yes. but, uh, where where did you grow up in, the, in Milano? So, no, no, even more north, like uh, Trentino. Trentino is the region I'm from, and uh, I'm from a small town. I always represent it, even when I go out on my fights. It's called Mezzo Corona, so it's like a five thousand people town. Basically, it's a small town, but I always represent it. I always post like oh, I come I come pride, from a small you know? town. My parents were born in a small town of 2000 people. So I know what it's like to grow up in a small town. Yeah, yeah, man, like, it's different, man. Like, in a sense, it's even different. It's even, it's even harder to adapt in other places when you come up from a small town. Cause you got like, you got your, you got your things that you're used to. And, uh, you know, people from cities are more like open on a lot of things. Yeah. So, but yeah, man, Mezzo Corona is the, the you, place I'm from. Did you have a farm in your town, like a farm growing up? No, 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 I don't. But like my my uncle, my my great uncle actually has, and uh, but no, I don't. But like a lot of people there, like have like uh, they have grapes. Obviously, they do wine from mm-hmm. from my place, so mm-hmm. it's really common. Like we have one of the biggest winery in all Europe, and it's just a small town. Uh, How old were you when when you left the town? uh 19 19 straight to london <laughs> oh straight to, so you went to england first so i went to london first for two years then got back here like for like like, like got back to italy for like six months and then uh, and then started going back and forth to us to um, california basically and then eventually moved to, to california like five years ago so growing up um when did you realize you had this talent to fight. Was it in school? You got in a scuffle, and you're like, "Oh, I messed oh yeah, up. yeah." I mean, I don't, I always loved like contact sports. You know, like you know, when we were playing rugby or stuff like that. Like sometimes you're just messing around, and I'm like, like I want, <laughs> I want to punch people. Or <laughs> and then, then yeah, man. Like growing up, I always like always couples, always couples. Like I remember, like. Be like twelve or thirteen, and like, like the little the cop from my little town, like always bringing me home to my to my mom. Like, hey, he was he was fighting somewhere, <laughs> keep, like keeping my home. So, like, uh, how how exactly did you um like start going? Like, like what made you say, okay, I got to go to London? Where were you fighting locally in Italy? Uh, yeah, yeah. So then, so then I started fighting. I mean, I started like training and. Um, and I started training around there, like, like, basically, like, going, like, 30 minutes away with the train, bike into a spot, train, come back halfway, train there, come back again all the way back home, and then go go sleep and wake up in the morning and go to school, basically. And that was my life for, like, a good, like, two years and a half. Mm-hmm. And I realized, because, like, I, I was naive, like, I'm like, I want to do this, but, I, like, there wasn't really anything around like there was like the, the sport didn't really exist in a sense especially <laughs> where i was from there like in yeah. that the little uh in the scene over there like in in, in the area so um, i was going like four or five different gyms even more for even six and um and then i'm like man like one thing is to do it like that but if i really want to fight and i want to make it like a, a serious thing then i have to move eventually so then uh, with a guy that I met to in a competition, a grappling competition, I'm like, let's go to London to check it out. And then uh, 
I was there for a week. We checked it out for a week, and then um, and then after that, I'm like, yeah, man, this this is the place I want to be because that that week we got in, we got we got lit up by all the guys, and I'm like, fuck, you know what? So everybody, doing? everybody was better than you when you first got in the gym. Yeah, like to an extent, like, and even if they weren't, because at the end maybe I was like doing all right, but like I could see like the level of the of like experience. Of, uh, like of, the, yeah, yeah, but not just of the experience of the of the technique and all that, you know. Like I was slacking on a lot of things, you know. And so I'm like, yeah, man, we gotta we gotta move out here. And then and then he he actually uh, went a different route. Like he didn't really like kept training. He, he he started training again after a few years. And I'm like, well, I'm I'm gonna go on my own. And so basically, finished high school and then and then left and went to and went to to London basically. So when you first get to London. Everybody in the gym, their technique is on a level above. Like, how is that dedication to getting yeah. better? Was it, was it yeah, a lot of training? But, to be honest, like, that time I went for a week, like, you know, two new guys that want to do MMA, you know, we look young and strong, and they got us to the pros to spar. When mm -hmm. I went back to, like, my, on my own, on training on my own, like, to move on my own, like, they put me on the, with the amateurs, they put me on the classes, like just, just do classes. So mm -hmm. I was just showing up for the classes and that was it for like a good two months, two, three months. And then, and then they realized this motherfucker is here every fucking day, like six days a week, like twice a day. Like basically I was showing up, I was working in the morning and I was showing up early afternoon, two, 3 PM. And I was just leaving the gym around 11. I was just staying at the gym for like six, seven hours on, in a row. And then uh, I was just doing the class. And then after a couple of months, these guys are like, man, this guy's actually serious. I don't know if he's going to go anywhere, but he's about it. Like he, he wants it. And then, so they started getting me with like, with, uh, with the better guys in, 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 in the pro classes and stuff. And, and, uh, and then there's where I realized, but by the time I was already like putting in some experience because like two, three months. And I mean, like, you know, in a couple, like I've always been a quick learner, you know, like I, when I make a mistake, when I make a mistake, I don't want to do it twice. Mm -hmm. So even after like a, a good two, three months doing all these classes, I was already a little bit better. But then of course, like, of course, like you had like a lot of good guys that were like beating on me, but you know, that's the game, you know. Was you, there like are, any one person that like really helped you the most or like someone that you were like looked up to that was uh, like. Oh, there, there was a lot of guys, man. Like it was, it's, uh, I'm a little bit nostalgic of those days. Uh, you know, was, I mean, even though I hated it, I hated it back in the days because it was hard. Like I, all I was doing was like, this is like my 19s to 21s. Everybody like, I'm sitting on my phone. They're back home partying and having fun, and I'm yeah. just like, doing, like grinding. But uh, there's this Moldavian Moldovian guy. He was a he was a nice guy, but he was a from, beast. From Maldives? Right? From Maldives? No, no, no. From Moldova. Oh, Moldo okay, Moldova, okay, okay. Like East Europe. Okay, okay. Good sambo guys, Pavel the Rofti. I don't know if you're ever gonna see this, but he was, he was, he was really good. And then, uh, and then you got a lot of guys, man. Like you had like Mike, Michael Shipman. He, they, they, all of these guys like made it to a good, to a very good level. Um, you know, a lot of them Bellator fighters. You know, then I ended up leaving with John Hathaway at the time. He was a UFC fighter. He was very good. So he he took so you to, to LA. He took you to LA. Are you in Los Angeles or just California? No, no, and, and no, no, no. Then, um, then when I was living there for one, you know, it's always it always happened like that kind of like uh, I, I came for a week to LA to train for a, a jiu-jitsu competition, and then here I met another guy that was already a legend in the game, already retired. He, his name was like Renato Sobral, like Babalu. Okay, yeah, he, I heard. He was Babalu. Uh, he he was a he he was a, he's a legend in the game. And uh, and I met him there. He was training for like uh, for she was training jujitsu too, basically. And then I, you know, I I got I got closer to him and I started talking to him. And then and uh, he's like, well, you know, if you want to do MMA, because I I I did grappling, but like I, I was there for like a grappling competition. But in reality, I wanted to like like my goal was always MMA. Like grappling was always like just for fun. And in, in the meanwhile, I'm a, I'm a Chicago American, so he's like, oh, just. Just go. You gotta go to Kings, basically, which is the gym I'm at, and I've been since since I came here. 
you got to go to Kings uh, um, if you if if you if you want to do MMA basically. And so then uh, so then that week went by, and uh, and I went back to London, and um, but in my mind it all remained like you know eventually I got to go check out Kings because uh-huh. that's where like a lot of good guys are. Mm-hmm. Then um, then I move away. Then then things happened and uh, life was getting like a little bit like like you know like I was like and also I felt like I needed a change. But you know like twenty one two years on a row like just grinding basically like no social life just like training and and training and working training and working like basically working to have a little bit of saving to fuck to fucking train basically that's it. And then, um, and then I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go back to it. But at the same time, um, they they invited me to this tournament. Um, that they, they were trying to do things in a proper way. Uh, it's called Venator, and like call like good guys and invest some good money in Italy. Was was the first time for an event in Italy to to do things pretty pretty good. And uh, and it was three fights in six months, and it was like 10k for the winner. So I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna do this, you know. So I went back and I and for six months they trained in Milan, basically back and forth from like my place to Milan. How far is it, my, your your town to Milano? Yeah, in Milan is like two hours and a half drive. Drive, okay, not bad. Yeah, but I I would go down on a Monday and drive back on a Friday, basically. So then uh, ended up winning that tournament, uh, made those ten k, and then uh, right away when I had to defend the title for that organization, I'm like. This dude they're giving me is, is pretty good. It's pretty experienced. He was actually from UK too, and I'm like, I want to do a camp in 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 uh, in America. Um, so then, uh, so then, basically, the idea was to come here and train at Kings, but I didn't know how expensive it was and all this, like, because the time just it was more than ten k to train there, right? Oh uh, no, all together plus like. Um, stay, yeah, stay, the flight, flight. staying. Yeah. Like I wanted to stay three months, but <laughs> like with the fly, with everything, you know. Plus, mm-hmm. I spent some of my, I didn't. Everything was just. I was very like you know like, but that's how that's how things happen. If you know too much ahead, a lot of times you don't do shit. Like yeah. you, you need to go and then figure it out. Yeah. So then, uh, so basically, come here. Uh, some some me and a friend, and they were supposed to give us a place. This guy basically, uh, we stayed at this place for like two days, and then they're like, no, nah, guys, you got to go. Because um, because you got to go. And I'm like, man, we're going to be on the street. And he's like, whatever. And like, you got to figure it out. And that's where we were. Like, we were we were staying on a McDonald's, like, getting the Wi-Fi, basically, for, for two days. Until, basically, um, you know, I would just leave. Basically, go to train, come back. Like, McDonald's was my house for, like, two fucking days with my tr- with my, with my luggage and shit. 24 hours McDonald's. And then uh, and then at one point, uh, I'm like, we can't keep going like this. What the fuck? We need, we need a place to fucking sleep and shit. And, and I'm like, um, and so then uh, I'm scrolling through all my numbers. I'm like, how the fuck? Like, how? Like, there must be somebody that can, like, help us out. And then... One guy that brought his girlfriend to fight in one of the events in Italy that I exchanged number with, it came to my mind like fucking you know, hell, let me let me see if this guy can do something for us. And then uh, this, this guy's name is Jason Melly, and um, he's a black belt under uh, Caesar Gracie. Like good, like he's he's very well known in the in the in the scene. But so, but I didn't know at the time. I was just because I met him cutting weight in the sauna back in Italy, and I'm like. You know, you're not even you're on your own war. You're not even really like, I'm like yeah, whatever. But let, let's exchange number. Who knows? I call him, bro. This guy comes, picks uh, picks us up, and we basically stay with him for three months. And so I did the whole camp, and then uh, and then went back, won the fight, and then and then the next time that I came, I kind of knew how California was and how I had to to organize to to do it. And so then then, then that's how like. Um, the 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 American uh, kind of like uh, uh, the American uh, like you know American dream how, how my American journey started you know yeah. and then so eventually I moved here when when you say you're training right and 
working out for hours and eating good. Don't you think like the sacrifices kind of gives you a, a mental edge also? Like, is it a, a thing in your head? You're like, you know, I've been training for this. Like, is, is that what oh, it is? For sure. for sure, man. Like, this is like, uh, you, like the discipline, discipline is like, it's, it's built. Like you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be your own ruler. Like, like mm -hmm. you have to give yourself your own code and that's it. Like you have to be able to, to get to that point where if you decide something for yourself, mm -hmm. it has to be that way. I'll give you an example. Like, um, you know, I'm friends with Toretto, uh, Matteo Papa, my friend Giovanni Scudetti, mm -hmm. they're all boxers. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. And, uh, when when especially Mateo, he's crazy with the diet. Like we all like tease him, and they're like, "Man, this guy, he don't eat anything," and like he won't even cheat at all. Like, are you the same way? Like strict, 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 strict with the diet? No, because I know my body, you know. But it's more for me. It's more about like um, no, because I I, I mean I, I cut a lot of weight, but for mm -hmm. every of my fights. But I know my body. I've been doing it for a long time, and I mean I, I can I know how to like control my um mm -hmm. my weight in a sense so no but i mean it's big plus like my work ethic is pretty crazy like I'll, I'll i'll work like most of the people most of the time so i burn so many calories that throughout the day that it's not even that hard for me to lose weight in a your sense and like even an what your body's like an oven whatever you eat you just burn it yeah almost like and then the moment like and the moment I'm like, all right, now you got to cut weight and, you know, you got to be. And I mean, I'm at a point where, like, I want to eat healthy because it's better fuel for my body when I want to train more than like, more than like, uh, oh, I have to eat healthy because if not, then I get fat. Like, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't get fat, like, yeah. even if I eat bad. I just I I don't, I don't feel like, like a trainer. Like if I want to eat, a, if I want to eat something sweet, like, I'll, I'll get away with it. Like, maybe not like the week of the fight or two weeks before the fight. Plus, I'm not even a, like, I mean, yes, I'll, I'll have a sweet, but just if like, I'm already full and, and satisfied with the rest of the food. Yeah. I saw this like um, a, a trainer, a nutritionist that was feeding you pasta. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think his name's, he's an Italian guy too, Mateo, right? Mateo, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, Mateo he, he, yeah that's one of the reasons why, like, also like, he never, like, he never, he never messed my metabolism up, you know. So my metabolism like always remained fast, even like even if I'm cutting weight. So now he's very good, yeah. And he feeds me, yeah, yeah. He's like, because bro, like there is a misunderstanding on pasta and pizza. Like it's all, yeah. it's all about the timing. It's all, it's all about the like the quality of the food. It's not always like like it's just like it's about like what you put on top of it. Because of course, like if you're gonna eat like greasy. Mm -hmm. fucking sauces on top of the pasta yeah, yeah, the pasta gonna be yeah. bad but it ain't about the pasta see like in Italy the mentality with pasta like with fresh tomatoes olive oil they're like oh pasta's yeah. healthy here when they add all the crema polo it's like yeah yeah oh. yeah exactly so yeah, yeah bro like you're gonna biggest, put a yeah that's the biggest I, difference I see no for sure yeah if you're gonna put a lot of cream on it if you're gonna make like a thick sauce and like or like like in Italy also, like if you have like carbonara, you know that's gonna be like a like a fat, like a little bit of a fatty meal, you know. Mm -hmm. So if you wanna have like like a like a leaner meal, you're not gonna have carbonara. But if you have like like pasta al pomodoro, that's nothing wrong with it, bro. Like this is like pasta, which is good carbs, mm -hmm. uh, and with with like with like tomato sauce and a little bit of olive oil and maybe like some parmesan cheese on top. That's Parmigiano, that that's about it. How are you gonna say that that is bad, you know? Yeah. But if you start like loading on the oil or like making like the red sauce with like cream and stuff, then then of course yeah. you're gonna be bad. Being a native Italian guy, right? And you're in Los Angeles. I feel like on the East Coast, there's more Italian Americans, like for sure. First generation. What's the biggest difference that you've seen with like growing up in Italy and now like the Italian Americans here? Now. It, West Coast, West Coast, it's like they're they're on their own. Like it's there's not much of a European influence on uh, yeah. on on the on the West Coast. LA a little bit maybe, but I'm in Orange County actually. Okay, Orange County, there is very very little uh, yeah, um, European influence. Do you ever miss New York? That? New York, I love New York. It's just a little bit too hectic if I if in a 
in a perspective of if I let, let's say I'm there also for training and all that, but like there's a lot I of distractions. Love, there's a lot of distractions. Yeah, yeah, and not even in a bad way, just destruction, just like a lot of a lot of things going on all the time. Yeah, maybe, maybe I would have to get used to it, maybe I have to get away with it, but uh I feel like yeah, you need you need places of peace sometimes when you especially you, you need yeah, you need to be bored on your own sometimes also when you when when you're preparing for a fight, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, like when you were in LA too, I saw my friend Vincent Giganti with you. Like you went into bed and woke up. Uh, I was dying, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, he was like, uh, he, he hit me up, and then I'm like, or I'll come. Like he's like, oh, I'm throwing a party at my house, and uh, I got there late, I guess, and he was already sleeping. <laughs> and I'm like, and there was like these guys at the door, like at the door of his house at the gate, and I'm like, bro, like. Uh, Vincent was was like uh, asked me to come here, like he's gonna go crazy, and he's like, "Oh, you're the guy." I'm like, "Yeah, I'm the guy." All right. So then I get I get in, and he's he's sleeping, bro. And like, so I woke him up, and that's like, so funny. What the fuck? <laughs> like, what are you doing here? <laughs> being being in LA, right? What's a food that you found in America that like in doesn't exist in Italy, or we make better, or America? Oh, America. Um. Guys make better. <laughs> it's you make better. I don't know. I mean, I mean there might be something, but uh, no, it doesn't come to my the mind. Cake, the cakes, the cakes, and like the sweets are a little crazier, you know? Yeah, yeah. The, the cakes are good, yeah. The cakes, some of the cakes are very good, yeah. But like, mm-hmm. and like, the Italians are going to crucify me for this, but like some good mac and cheese could be good sometimes here and there. Like, <laughs> like, I'll, I'll have it as a side. What about uh, like breakfast? Because like in Italy, breakfast is cornetto. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cafe. yeah. Do you like having a big breakfast, like pancakes, that's the kind of stuff? Uh, sometimes, 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 yeah. But um, I have a big bre- breakfast kind of anyway when I, because I have breakfast then I go to train. So mm-hmm. I'll have a good breakfast like before, or, like normally also. But yeah, eggs and stuff like that, not like I'm not an egg day, an, an egg guy like for the morning every day. But here, like once in a while, I'll, I'll, I'll have it, yeah. Um, but yeah, in Italy, breakfast is almost, it's like cornet, like brioche, yeah, cafe, yeah. cappuccino, cafe, cappuccino, brioche, that's it. So the Italian rap scene, right, is crazy yeah. right now. I'm friends with a couple of rappers from doing the, these kind of things. Do you have like a list of some of your favorite artists? Maybe we uh, we could tell one of our, you know, some of our followers who you train to, you know? Who, who I train to? Yeah, like, let's say, you know, do you listen to music when you train or no? Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. But I'm a, I'm a little bit weird with, with music. Like, I'll go, like, I'll jump around. I'll jump around with, like, uh, with with styles and, like, and genres, too. But, like, but, uh, no, no, I know a lot of the rappers, too. I know a lot of the rappers, too. And, uh, no, I know I saw, you. I saw they all follow you and you follow them. So that's why. Yeah, I, yeah. No, no, I know. I know a lot of them. Yeah, it's, uh, no, it's coming up pretty good. All the new guys, like. They're they're hyped up right now, but um, I don't know many of them. But the the first rapper that I met was uh, Emi Skilla because he he's the first one that recognized me when I when I first uh, yeah. when I fought when I first fought in the UFC. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm friend with Sfera. I'm, I'm friend with like um, I met Marrakesh. Oh wow! Yeah. Marrakesh. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, yeah, man. I mean, no, no, they're cool. Yeah. So the reason why we did this interview is because we have a huge Italian American network, right? And just to show you like the way Italian Americans are, I'm not the biggest UFC fan, but when I know you're fighting, I watch your fights, right? So just because you're Italian, we automatically support you. Absolutely. Have you, have you seen that? Like being in, in uh, like during your events, like the Italian pride, like how crazy. I, I haven't. I want to see more, but this is a good this is a good platform for them to know me. I think is I think we gotta get together, man. We gotta get you together. You fight more. in LA, right? Usually, mostly. No, I haven't fought in LA that much. Uh, Vegas, here and there, uh-huh. but it was all closed doors. I think it was like yeah, so that's why also. Yeah, bro, I almost forgot how to fight when I was in Phoenix. There wasn't that many, but that was my uh-huh. that was the last one that. Um, that was the last one that uh, uh, that I fought with public. Before that, I was like, um, 
all closed doors. Yeah, next time in Vegas, man, we gotta you gotta bring you gotta it let down. me know. You gotta let me know. Speaking of which, I mean, I could see you also fighting in New York. Like, I, I think you'd have a crazy turnaround in New York because all so many people like they see the interviews I do. They're like, you gotta get Marvin. You gotta get Marvin. You gotta get Marvin. I'm like, yo, I would love to, you know. And then yeah, yeah. Ivano, uh, shout yeah. out to him. One day he's like, I know Marvin. You want to interview him? I'm like, yeah. And he and he set this up. But oh, uh, Ivano. Yeah, Ivano. Yeah, Ivano yeah, set yeah, this yeah. up. So, you know, I want to say thank you to Ivano Milano. For sure. Setting this up. But I would love <laughs> to see him fight in New York, too, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I would love to, man. Madison Square Garden. I was, I was there for the fight, but I wasn't fighting. I was just there, like, um, as a guest, basically. And, um, and uh, yeah, no, New York is – I love New York, man. I love New York. When's your, when's your next fight now? My next fight will be uh, uh, September 3rd in Paris. Oh, in Paris. Is, yeah. No, for sure, man. Like, I'm going to campaign hard for, like, one fight in New York and then one in Italy. We have to make it happen. The first time you have seen Italy will be fucking nuts. They, a lot of yeah. these guys fight in Italy. Like, I saw Toretto always fights in Italy. Like, the last yeah. couple of fights I saw, I don't know about always, but the last couple of fights. No, yeah, yeah. But boxing is it's easier, like, to, I don't know, for the UFC to organize it in Italy, like, it's always been, like, it's always been a lot of, like, 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 like things behind closed doors that they didn't click or something. And in reality, there were like, for a moment, there was some Italians, but they then, the, I mean, now I'm the, I'm the representative of the, the representative of the, of the flag really. So. I, yeah, bro, for sure. Yeah. So, so now, now, uh, yeah, after my fight, you're going to hear me like shouting out like hard after I win, like, man, next time. I'll fight. It has to be in Italy or in New York. Yeah, man. Listen, any way we could help, we're here for you. Yeah, Thank yeah, you for no your will. time. Best of luck. September 3rd, make sure to watch the fight. And make sure to tune in with Marvin, man, because he's a hard worker. And you Thank put you. out a lot of funny content, too, out there. So give him a follow. <laughs> oh, yeah. have, you, have, you, have you following Paolo Costa's Twitter lately? Who's that? Oh, no, no, you said, you said, no, what did you say about, you I said, said make sure to follow Marvin on the socials. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Always, I see you always do, like, dancing and calling out some other fighters and shit, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's good, good content. Yeah, I always, yeah, man, like, always, some, some stuff always happens on my fight, I don't know, like, must have some bad luck or something, I don't know, because, uh, but it's okay, it's okay, Let, let's, this one is gonna happen, I have a good feeling for it, and uh, it's gonna be a, an awesome an awesome, an awesome fight and an awesome experience for all the Italians all over the world and fight fans. Hell yeah. Best of luck to you, my bro. Thank you, bro.